father and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou layest to thee, will I give it thee, and to thy seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and to thee, and to thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed, and behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places where thou goest, and will bring thee again into the land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of thee of. And Jacob waked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I do it not. Let's bow our heads. My heavenly Father, so glad, Lord God, to be in your house tonight, Lord, to be able to preach your word, Lord. Help us just to preach in the way you'll have us to preach, and it'll go out and accomplish exactly what you'll have us to do, Lord. I don't know, Lord, if I'm planning or if I'm watering, but I know you'll give the increase. And Lord, for one here lost, I pray tonight, be night to get right with you before it's too late. Help us to be able to encourage somebody that needs encouraged, Lord. Help me, Lord, be encouraged. Help me to, to be who you'd have me be. And Lord, this what you have here, we all done here tonight. And I ask these things in Jesus Christ's holy name. And amen. amen. I say praise his holy name. Amen. And I thought tonight for a text tonight, the Lord is in this place. Amen. Amen. He's here in this place. Amen. He's right here in this place. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what? He, he wants to abide with me. Amen. He wants to abide with you. He wants to abide with you. It's like the old Zach. He says, I want to go home with you. He wants to go home with us. He don't want this to meet us once or twice a week for an hour, hour and a half. He wants full custody. Amen. He don't want this partial custody where you're going to get custody for the weekends. He wants to have full custody. He wants to go home with you tonight. Amen. Tell you what, the Lord is in this place. And I'm glad he's in this place. Oh, Stephen, he was getting ready to be stunned. He was preaching the gospel. He, he told him, he told him, Stephen said, you stiff neck and not circumcised and hard and ear, you always resist the Holy Ghost as your father did so. Which the prophets have not of your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them, which slew them for the coming of that just one, of whom you have been now the traitors and murderers, who have received the law of the disposition of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed with their teeth. I quote Stephen. They didn't like the message. Yeah. They didn't like the truth. Yeah. So we come tonight to preach the truth. Say the truth, you know, who the Son set free is free to me. I tell you what, Jesus Christ, He's the truth. I tell you, after that work, I have people out there saying, that's, they're telling me, that's your truth. I said, no. It's not, he's, they say, my truth and your truth are different. I said, I'm talking about God's truth. He's truth. Let God be true and let every man liar. It don't matter what you think about me. I'm here to represent Jesus Christ tonight. Just like old Stephen, I came tonight to preach the word to you so that you might be encouraged. That you might be kind of to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. God's darling. That's what he is. And I tell you what, if you hear the altar is open, Amen. this altar is never closed. And it's never out of order to come to an altar prayer. For whatever the need is, we're not here to judge nobody. We're here to help one another. Amen. We come here tonight to encourage. We come to light. We come together. God knows exactly what we need and when we need it. That's why He He set the church up so we can come together and have fellowship and help each other. Stephen preached the word. They didn't like the message. They were so mad at him that they had cut him in their heart. That's what the word will do. It will cut you right where it hurts. It'll let you know where you stand before God. It'll let you know all of our shortcomings. It'll let you know that without God, we're all lost on the way to hell. But through and by the blood of Jesus Christ, God's darling, we can make it to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Not nothing that we
we done? I've had people tell me, say, well, I'm just as good as you. I say, you're probably better than I am. I ain't no good. God is the only good. Jesus is the only good. There's none good, no, not one. Our righteous filthy rise in the eyes of God. Stephen told them that you're a stiff neck, you're murderers just like your fathers were, and they cut them in their heart, and they ran for him, and they started gnashing at him with their teeth. Can you imagine that? A bunch of people, a congregation, start stoning you because you are doing what God would have you do. Some folks might say, why did God let that happen? Stephen didn't argue about it. Stephen didn't complain about it. Stephen looked up. I always remember Brother Sam when he preached about Stephen. He said that Stephen looked up and saw Jesus standing on the right hand side of the Father. See, when we're in trouble, we know that we got we got a, we got a Savior who is sitting on the right hand side of the Father, making intercession for us. Where I tell you what, when we fail him, but when we're in trouble, he is standing on his feet, ready to help us. Stephen looked up and he saw him. And the folks around him saw Stephen and said it was like looking up on the face of an angel. Stephen did the plane. And Stephen said, Don't hold this charge against them. And he fell asleep and went on to be with the Lord. You know what was happening that day? The Lord was in that place. Amen. When we're in trouble, the Lord is in that place. When I'm in my garage over there, the Lord is in that place. Wherever you're at on the job, whatever you're doing out here in the field, or you're getting up here putting that roof on a house, or building a house, the Lord is in that house. Because I tell you what, He said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, I'll go with you always. Even to the end of this whole world. Amen. Brother Richie, Joshua ran them semis. The Lord is right there. Amen. Wherever we're at, He goes with us. Because He's a friend that'll stick closer than a brother. He's with us always. I tell you what, I, I just can't hardly comprehend that. And I tell you what, after this stone old Stephen, they took Stephen's clothes and took them over and laid them at a man's feet. whose name was Saul, who was persecuting the church. Yeah. Who had orders. He had papers. He had a law on his side. See, that anybody that worships this God that you're talking about, you can put them to death. You can drag them off to jail. You can just about do anything you want to do. Put it in my own words. So here he was, he lay down at his feet. And here, here old Saul was, he was on his way to Damascus. To get more papers. To get more warrants. Or whatever you want to call it. To arrest poor people. And as he was on his way, there's a bright light shine. And it knocked old Saul down to the ground. And he heard a voice. Old Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? <laughs> he knew who he was. When the Lord gets your attention, yeah, you know who he is. When that conviction comes up on you and lets you realize that you're lost on the way to hell, I tell you what, you know exactly what's going on. I tell you, when I, I had people asking me to go to church when I was lost, and I came just to show up. That's not why I came. <coughs> I came for the one of them. I may not thought of one of them. 
If I had people aggravating me half to death, they come. But the truth is, that's what conviction will do. Yeah, amen. Right. Yeah. You can use any excuse you want. I came because this person come. I came because this person left. But I tell you, the truth is, you came because God is working on you. Amen. He is in this place. He I tell you what, without the Spirit of God, you heard this morning, you ain't none of His. Tell you what, if you want to go to heaven, you want to, I tell you what, you're not going to get there on accident. You're going to have to trust Jesus Christ, God's darling, as your personal Savior. Stephen was stunned. Saul on his way to Damascus. Heard, saw that bright light and said, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? And hard to kick against the pricks. And one day old Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? He knew exactly who he was. The Lord got his attention. He was struck blind. He couldn't see nothing. And what did he, what did he say to him? They were in the good old King James Version. He told him, he told him to get on a road called straight. That's what happens. Preach, man. When you come to the Lord. Yeah. When the Lord gets your attention. Yeah. You're on that broad road that leads to destruction. And the Lord's saying you need to get on that straight road that leads to life everlasting. See, there are a few people just on that straight road that tell you what that road is why and tell you what, there's a lot of folks on that road that's leading to destruction, that's leading straight to a place called hell. You need to get off that broad road. So, you need to get off that broad road. You need to get on a road called straight. And Lord God holds a man called Ananias. Ananias, I got somebody coming. And I want you to pray for them. I want you to lay your hands upon them. And I want you to pray for them. Oh Lord, I can't do that. Have you not heard about this man? How, he, how he's persecuting the church? How he's killing people? And Lord said, he's a chosen vessel. You lay your hands upon him. And you pray for him. We don't need to remind the Lord how somebody is. We don't need to remind the Lord of it. You know, I know people say, the Lord, now you know your word says this. He knows what his word says. I may need to be reminded. But we don't need to remind the Lord. Lord, you said you would do this. Lord knows what he said he would do. Amen. And he will do exactly what he said. You'll come to him with a broken heart, a contrite spirit, and no wise will he cast you out. You can trust him. God's darling. Talk about sin. What God thinks about it. He sent his darling to pay our sin debt. Now tell you what, he told, he told old Saul exactly what to do to get on that road called straight. Now if he would have went the other way, I believe he would have died blind. <clears throat> but he done exactly what the Lord told him to do. And when Ananias put his hands upon him and prayed for him, then scales fell off his eyes. And he can see. Amen. Yeah. I remember when I got saved, the scales fell off. I could see, I wasn't blind out here that I couldn't see the trees. But I couldn't see where I was going. But spiritually, I was blinder than a bat. Amen. I couldn't see nothing. Yeah. My wife would get up and come to these men's dinners. On icy roads and snow-covered roads, slipping and sliding, running into the ditch, 
I say, that crazy woman. She's crazy. I hear driving around. We got food right there in the refrigerator. But here she is getting the kids off. Going out here, crawling off these roads, these hills, the slip and slide down there. I tell you what, she ain't got no sense at all. And then when I got saved, I was the one driving. Yeah. <laughs> Tell how the wicked sounds. I'm going to church. Yeah. Whatever's going on in the church, I'm going to be one of the first ones there. I don't care if there's two foot of snow out there. If I would have had to get a shovel out, if I would have had to dig my way off that hill, I would have got the shovel out, and I would have dug off that hill, and I would have been right here. Because the Lord changed this whole heart. Just like he did old Saul. He changed his heart. Now he don't want to go around killing people. Now he's on a road call strike. And later on, he gets his name changed from Saul to Paul. Amen. The Lord was in that place. Yes. Yeah. And the scales fell off. Yep. Yes. When you come to know the Lord, the scales fell off. The old man's dead. The old ways has passed away. Behold, all things become new. Not only does all things become new, but you will come new. Yep. Our brother that got baptized, the old things are gone. Amen. To be remembered no more. The devil might bring him up, but the Lord will say, What are you talking about? Amen. It's gone. Yep. The longer the life. Every time we get up from an altar prayer, wherever it might be, say, Lord, forgive me. They're gone. Amen. Live a repenting life. The Lord is in this place. And I was thinking about old Lazarus. He was dying. And his sister sent said, Lord, come. Our brother's dying. He's sick. And Jesus said, well, he'll live again. And they said, yeah, Lord, I know he'll live again in the resurrection. Yeah. Here again, telling the Lord what his word says. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. He is the life. He, I tell you what, he didn't say I, I was the resurrection. <laughs> He didn't say I was the way. He didn't say I was the life. He is the life. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the resurrection. And one of these days, he is coming back. Amen. He's coming back after his church. Horse to the blood of the Lamb. He's not coming after the Baptists. He ain't coming after the Methodists. He ain't coming after the Pentecostals. He's coming after his church. Amen. Horse to the blood of the Lamb. The Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world. That is who he's come back for. Yep. It's your name in the Lamb's book of life. I tell you what, the Lord is in this place. And, and the Lord said, he waited around about four days. He said, show me where he's at. Well, Lord, by now, it's been four days. He's thinking by now. Take me to him. You know, you hear everybody say, when Jesus wept that he loved him so much. You can believe that if you want. I don't believe that's what it meant. But that's okay. You don't, we don't have to agree on everything. Amen. I think, I think he wept because of all their unbelief. Amen. Because they didn't believe that he could bring him back. Because by now he stinks, Lord. What's the use? You waited too long. And, the, and Jesus prayed to the Father. He said, Father, I do this to glorify you. It ain't nothing about me. I'm doing this. I'm asking you, Lord, to do this so that everybody will believe and glorify the Father. Yep. 
And Jesus said, roll the stone away. And when he rolled the stone away, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And I don't know, I don't know what the people were thinking. I don't know if they thought that he was crazy or if he was going to come out of there. But here come Lazarus, walking out of there, all wrapped up in them green clothes. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. That's what he says every time somebody comes to get saved. Jesus said, loose him Amen. and let him go. He's free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Jesus Christ, He has all power. The old world we live in, we might say it's, out, it's way out of order. But God's in control. Right. No matter what the world, the circumstances look like, my God is in control. Amen. No matter what the storm is, Sometimes we're right in the middle of the storm. Just like Daniel. He was in a lion's den. You know what Daniel would tell you? The Lord's in this place. Amen. The Hebrew children in the fire. The Lord's in this place. See, sometimes we've got things we got to go through. We got our own trials. We got our own battles. We got to run things that comes up. But tell you what, Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even in the lion's den, even in the fire, wherever it might be, our Lord is right there with us. Amen. Through the death of the family, or sickness, or whatever might come up, the Lord is right there. People, people say, well, how do you do it? Trust Him. Lean on him. Don't lean on the wrong understand. Know that his ways are higher than your ways and higher than my ways. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. I tell you what, he is everlasting. And one of these days, we're going to be able to live with him forever. Amen. Amen. Never have to worry about no more death. Don't have to worry about no more trials. Don't have to worry about no more pain or no more sickness, no more anything that's going to hurt you. I tell you what, heaven is a real place where real people are going. And hell is a real place where real people are going. And the choice is ours. It's God's will that none perish that all come to repentance. But David said, I hold my soul continuously in my hand. It's up to me whether I get to heaven or not. And I've done make my mind up. Since it's up to me, I'm going. My name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. And when he calls my name, I can say it's been good. But the best is yet to come. We can't comprehend it. Jesus said, Jesus said, eyes haven't seen it, ears ain't heard it, neither has it entered in the heart of man the things that God has got prepared for those who love him. Do you love him tonight? I tell you what, there's only one way to heaven. There ain't no four or five different ways. You know, there are people think, you know, just because they're good, they can make it. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ Amen. and nothing else. Yeah. There's nothing good that we can do. The Bible says there's none good, no, not one. Our righteousness are filthy rags in the eyes of God. Tell you what, Jesus is in this place. Yeah. Old Moses on the backside of the desert after he killed an Egyptian running from Pharaoh. <laughs> I think maybe he thought maybe he'd run from God. I don't know. He was on the run. He was one of the man from Rome. But one day, 
He was on the back side of that desert, thinking he was all alone. And he saw a fire. He saw a bush on fire, but it wasn't being consumed. So he did like a lot of people would do. I, if I was out in the woods and I saw fire, whether it was being consumed or not, I would draw closer to it. That's just how I am. I may even throw my wrong one. I don't know. You just never know what I might do. But old Moses, he got a little close to it. It wasn't being consumed. And he heard a voice said, Moses, take off your shoes for the ground that you're on is holy ground. Wherever God is, it's holy ground. We're on holy ground right here, church. Because I tell you what, the Lord is in the house. And I tell you what, Moses found out that the Lord was on the backside of that desert. Amen. Well, he thought he was all alone. He was on the run. Tell you what, God had a plan for Moses. He wanted him to go back and tell Pharaoh and tell his people, tell God's people, I have heard their prayer. <laughs> he hears our prayers. You know, sometimes you think your prayers ain't going anywhere. God hears it. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You might get the answer, no. They might make you feel like your prayers are not going nowhere. Yeah. But they're going somewhere. You just don't like the answer. Yeah. Amen. I know. I, I get them kind of answers too. I don't like them. But God, they don't mean God's not listening. He knows what's best for us. He told, he told old Moses, he says, you get back and you tell my people, I have heard their cries. They didn't want to hear them. He started making all these excuses up. Well, Lord, I don't talk real plain. I got a problem with speech. He must have really, didn't really think about what was being done here. Yeah, yeah, but he could, have, he could have had that little speech problem took care of. The one that made him, he could have took care of that no problem at all. But instead, he got all Aaron to get with him to, to talk to him. God would tell Moses what he wanted Aaron to do. I tell you what, and then go and do what the Lord had to do. But he missed out on a blessing right there. The Lord was in that place. I tell you what. The Lord is in this place. And the Lord wants to go home with us. I tell you what, he don't just save us and just say, well, you're on your own now. No, he goes with us. Amen. Amen. Whatever we do. Mm -hmm. Hey, what you get in his word. Yes. Our new brother, start reading. Start praying. And be in church. Amen. Amen. Every time the door is open, as much as possible. To do those three things, the devil can't do nothing with you. God is in this place. And right after John was beheaded, <coughs> Jesus departed with his disciples. And that, that's when he said, Give him something to eat. Well, and the disciples, the Lord, where, what do you want us to get the food at? And he says, what do you have? We got a few fish, a few loaves of bread. Bring it. See, the Lord was in that place. He'll take and use what you got. And he will multiply what you have. I tell you what, he, he just wants us to be obedient. He wants us to be faithful. That's who he's looking for. He's looking for the faithful. He ain't looking for somebody just to make excuses why. Well, Lord, you don't understand tonight. That shows on television that I've been waiting for what to watch. Tonight's the finale. I can't miss that. See, the devil, he'll give you any kind of excuse you want to stay home. Yeah, and then what he'll do, he'll come and sit right in your seat. He wants you to stay home. He don't want you to be in God's house. He don't want you to be around God's children. Because he knows the Lord 
is right here in this place. Amen. Yep. And I'll I tell you what, I, I'm thankful that we're serving a God who loves us. Tell you what, we just need to be in me. Just like he told Noah, he wanted Noah to build a boat. If Noah wouldn't have done what God would have him do, he would have drowned with the rest of the people. But Noah knew God was in that place. And Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And you too, tonight, can find that grace. Actually, grace fell on you. Because you're the one lost. Jesus is grace. He is mercy. Grace, we get what we don't deserve. We get to get ahead. God's mercy, we don't get what we do deserve, which is a lake of fire. Brother Rick told me that years ago. And I always remember that. That was a good way to explain God's grace and mercy. The guys at work, I said, how you doing today? He goes, better than I deserve. I said, you got that right. <coughs> you deserve a lake of fire. Same as me. But through God's mercy, I don't have to worry about that. If you got the sun, you got life. Amen. If you don't have the sun, the wrath of God abides on you. Amen. You want to do the work of God? Believe on him. Whom he sent. That's the work of God. So as we stand and give a song, I don't know your heart. You know where you stand.